Hello, my name is Margaret Ajibode. I'm a STEM positive disruptor. The aim of this podcast is to basically raise awareness, educate the public, demystify what STEM is all about, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and to change people's perception of what the STEM world is all about, and to showcase how um, the STEM world has made the world, I, I guess, a, a more closer place where it's inclusive and accessible. And today I have a prime example of someone who's used technology for good and for <clears throat> uh, this um, a, a community which has been around a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. There are lots of people who are doing lots of things, but she's doing great work with try enabling the disabled community to be to have access and to make the world more I don't, closer to the world, changing people's uh, changing businesses the way they see the disabled kids and, and making their life, uh, making their platform more accessible for people with disabilities, physical disabilities, as well as those that are not that are obvious to, to the community or to the world itself. So uh, without further ado, I'll introduce Renee. Renee Perkins is the co-founder of City Mass, an award-winning company um, based in London. And as I said, um, the company was set up to address the issues that are faced by the same the same community, their families and friends. But I think if you think about it, it's actually facing the world because unless we make it accommodate the different needs, we miss out on opportunities and not just in the, on the profit margin, but in other ways as well. Um, Renee Perkins um, is a chartered accountant um, and she gave up her job, I think a couple of years ago. I mean, she will explain more about that. Um, she has been um, recognized as the top 50 BAMI founders on the 50. That's quite interesting. And also she's been recognized as well um, by her using techno technology for good um, to look at how to improve how society is working as well as the environment. And um, she's been, to, uh, been invited to um, places like Downing Street and other places as well. But instead of me talking more about it, um, this platform, let's talk briefly, so the platform she's, um, they've created uh, the co uh, created is to help disabled people. And it's there three, three tools. One is assist me, one, the second one's aware, aware is a diagnostic tool, and city map, which gives access to information about public places globally. Um, so let's, I give you the floor, Renee. I thank you so much for coming on board. I'm really excited about what you're doing with technology, how you use technology to make the world more inclusive for people with disabilities. Um, so can you please explain to us um, how the idea came about, why you felt there was a need for this, and how you're breaking down those boundaries that has been put up for so long for this community? First of all, thank you so much, Margaret, for having me on board here. A fantastic to hear the great work that you're doing as well. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the CEO and co-founder of CityMass. Uh, CityMass is an inclusive technology helping people with disabilities to live independently in multiple ways. And our mission is really to making the whole world accessible online and offline. Um, and those three technologies you described there, um, very succinctly, uh, very pleased to hear is how we achieve that mission. Um, so the, um, the platform itself has the three core technologies, as you mentioned, assisted, assist me and aware, which really address the digital exclusion problem. What that means is that um, a lot of websites and digital transformation projects out there are only considering that 85% um, or 80% of the world population excluding um, the disabled communities, which accounts for 40 million disabled people in the UK alone, and 1.3 billion, according to the UN. So it's not a niche market. Disabled communities are the biggest minorities in the world. And um, our technology of Assist Me, giving personal, personal digital experience for anybody, every single visitor to any website, and our Where's Diagnostic Tools help companies and businesses to be compliant with laws and regulation. Not only that, there is a business case, which I'll explain a bit more. And our mobility map is using machine learning to predict any accessibility missing data points around the globe, giving um, people with um, uh, mobility issues to find accessible places to go, whether it's restaurant, hotel, or 
or simply a station, public station. Um, and the applications mobility map is quite wide, so it can help property aggregators like Rightmove, for example, to enabling them to tap into that 15, 20% of the growth opportunities they're missing at the moment, because our technology can make their online presence accessible and usable for everybody. Um, and um, the mobility map data enabling people will use is to actually find the right locations of the property to be able to uh, live comfortably because moving houses for young parents, for example, is about finding the right school. Moving houses in flats for people with wheelchair users, are, it's about finding the right locations with accessible amenities nearby. So that is one of the user cases of mobility map. Other user cases of mobility map, including smart cities in terms of transportation, um, infrastructure, whether they are lifts is working at the station, the time of travel, um, whether there is a public a public bus company would like to use our technologies to be inclusive and also helping to tap into that missing market segments they're not able to reach. So that, in a nutshell, is um, what City Mars has mentioned, making the world accessible for everybody online and online, offline, and um, the three technologies I explained to help achieve that now why are we doing that because i think you know within the business world and and um, not only including everybody is the right thing to do um, ethically but also there's a massive business case for it so in the uk alone the spending power dis for disabled household per year according to department of work and pension is 274 billion pounds and globally is eight trillion dollars Right. As I mentioned, you know, 15, 20 percent of the world population is not a niche market. And um, those kind of spending power is not being captured for business by business and some of the organizations as well in the public sector. Um, we City Mass have the technologies and capabilities to help organizations to be inclusive. Uh, make sure that they are project digital transformation project is accessible for external customers but also potentially helping internal employees maybe internal employees may have some invisible disabilities that uh, may be hindering their performance our technology will be able to help with that as well so uh, that is uh, the business case for why everybody every business every organization should thinking about their products and uh, and their product development cycles from right at the beginning to make sure that it is inclusive of everybody amazing you know this is so important they align with what we are trying to achieve where the podcast is concerned is showing how technology can enable this to happen um one of the things that i, I just going back slightly is um how did you i, I know the idea came but how did the idea come about because i know there's a story behind it and also how did you get um people with disabilities to have an input to that because i know there was a, quite a, a different um stakeholders involved in this can you just briefly explain how that um how you came about uh, how that happened i think the the, the idea of city mass was originally from the 2018 where um we dig into a bit more detail on the pain points that we face as a family so my mother-in-law actually fostered disabled children over decades as a family our pain point is finding accessible places to go to celebrate um, joyous occasions like anniversaries and birthdays and we find it very difficult um, and that is a, a starting point of thinking wow okay why is it so difficult this kind of information should be accessible should be widely available but it was not and a company with my personal experience of being a a young parents with a push pram with a little baby and a two-year-old traveling through London on the ground and not knowing which station has left the time that I was going uh, there is was working or not and that kind of uh, frustration really linking the two bits of what how city mass technology right now is not just only helping people with disabilities but anybody have accessibility needs so it's it's helping people aging population it's helping people with situationally disabled um, um what that means is that for example if i'm traveling through london ground with push prams i I'm situationally disabled in a way that I need help in terms of going upstairs or taking a left. So that kind of needs, the fundamental needs is there. 
after research uh, into a bit more problem, we realize that actually there's 14 million people in the UK, if not more, that's because that statistics not including aging population, as I mentioned, situation with disabled where you potentially have eye surgery or, or knee surgery, uh, temporarily um, you are immobile. And um, and hidden disabilities, as you mentioned um, earlier on as well, and, and that, that kind of, um, audience, I feel like it's it's a lot more people that we could use our technologies to help with. Yeah. You know, this is so important. Do you know, I do love the fact that the, the driver was behind, the driver behind the way it started, you have experience at home, your, your, your mother-in-law, your family, they were involved in looking after people with disabilities, but he wasn't just focusing on that. You talked about you as a young parent, carry, you know, pushing pram, look, talk about the age, um, the age, Really, I mean, it's looking at a bigger picture rather than being, being this is just it. And it's seen, showing how, you know, having reviewed and having spoken to different people, that there is, that technology can be part of that solution to make life easier for everyone. Is that independent living, which means I don't have to depend on somebody else to be able to do this. If I have that information right in front of me on a mobile phone or wherever, or even if I go to a station, then there should be some stations where you can just press a button and you're able to get the information straight away or however you see fit, because there are different ways to do the same thing. And it's quite interesting. How are the company, how are companies receiving this? Because it's it's such an important thing. You know, I, I love what you say, city master code for mobility. It is so true, you know, because unless we address what's going on, because we think sometimes businesses or people in general think, oh, we are okay, and we are, we are addressing that. But really, in reality, when it comes to someone who's in need, they, they're short, there's a shortfall there. So how are companies are receiving what you're doing? How are, how are they saying, oh, we think this should be, is an important thing for us. We need to redress it. No, that's that's a fantastic question, Margaret. Um, so the 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 the, the perceptions of city mass, if you like, what we do in terms of the missions we achieve, it's undoubtedly supportive for any organisations we spoke to, regardless whether they're pri private or pu public, because everybody knows, including everybody in their service and product offerings, is the right thing to do. Um, but what do they not? That what do they not realize is um, the amount of business opportunities or amount of target audience that they can reach for their service for public sector, for example, or their products and service offering for the private sector um, is not aware. The business case was not widely aware that the fact that, you know, uh, disabled communities are, I'll, I'll call them as a sticky market segments in business terms where, you know, if your products and offering, your service offerings are accessible to them and you provide good product and services for them, they keep coming back over and over again. And a lot of times, 80%, I would say, you know, the, the businesses are not accessible. They, they just, it's almost the same as like you close the door to a flow from us you know from from certain uh, you close half the door basically yeah. <laughs> like, of course look, yeah I just, I just want this i don't want this it, it just just does not make any sense whatsoever um and you know I, you know this is so important so what would you say to businesses or organizations because it's not just businesses it's wherever there's a need i mean what would you say what would you like to for, for them to do or to be aware of because it's not just about selling a product it's about sh showing that you it's a, as you said it's ethical it's, it's the right thing to do we need yeah. that because we are you know there's a need yeah. yeah absolutely so think about it from a multiple levels i think from a business perspective one um is um the sort of internal employment kind of level are your business actually inclusive because a lot of people a lot of people with disabilities have you know their superpowers for example people with autism tend to be really 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 high attention to details like you know if the, the the role requires that level of skills i think they they fit in really well um so make sure that your employment and 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 um and, and your policy your your hr policies are inclusive for being a, a disability confidence employers is it's a fantastic thing to do um and secondly and secondly for uh, making sure that you know your internal employees are 
got the right tools and and um, assistive technologies to help them to excel within within the company and third and 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 and, and thirdly is that what you're what, whatever you're offering whether it's a product or it's a service from a design perspective because inclusive design benefits benefits all as oh, we mentioned right oh. you 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 provide a product and services for everybody uh, for for people with disabilities actually it turns out actually benefits a lot more people than just this people with disabilities for example you know in in a train station you can see there is people with wheelchairs but also you have multiple push prams and then you will have um tourists with luggages the, the, the needs are the similar needs out there um so um so so make sure your product and service offering from the beginning when you start researching and design to be inclusive includes your your customer research including in your customer research audience of people with disabilities or people with vision impaired for example and um, include your data if you use the technology company include your data make sure your data is not biased uh, whether it's gender bias race bias or people with, or disability bias Right. Make sure those kind of things are not biased from the product service development perspective. And then you come to a, a kind of a channel of uh, selling, if you like, or sharing and providing your services and product. And that bit is particularly important because with any organizations, that bit, if you're not doing very well, you won't be having a successful project. I.e., okay. mm. won't be getting to the target audience you get into and that digital that's the digital inclusion tools that we have sysme and where will really help to be able to tap into um um to make sure that your your product and services dissemination is in the right channel and an accessible channel for everybody and, and and then you know obviously after that it's about a wider ecosystem make sure that you know the societies understand from right age in the educational level there is there is understanding of equality there's understanding diversity so understanding in fact the difference in understanding the uniqueness of everybody you know we are indeed you know thank you so much that is absolutely right and this is what the podcast is all about we want to educate we want to raise awareness we want to demystify what the, the public thinks about the stem world we want to be able to change perception and you know you're a prime example of how you've used technology for good and how we want to make the world inclusive and accessible and the different platforms that it will enable that and it's up at, about talking to businesses to allow that so finally, and I'm so grateful, seriously, Renee, I'm so impressed about what you're, 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 you're thinking and your drive to, to try and do that. And that to me is so important because unless you have passion for something, you cannot drive it forward. And I, the more I hear you, the more I, you know, I'm really excited about where this tool is going to take, where you're going to take this tool next. But finally, um, we've only got about five minutes. What five recommendations would you make to make the world in inclusive, especially with disabled people. I know I'm talking about this, but we're talking about the technology side of things. How can we help to make sure on both sides of the left, so from the back end, so the, the, the creative side or the developing side, the process side to the end user side, how can we make things a much better world for people with disabilities? What are the things shall we be doing? Especially maybe about recruitment, with, uh, you know, um, training, whatever it is that makes, and it's your flaw. It's not about trying to conform to what everyone else is saying, but from your heart, what would you say would be the right thing to do? I, I, I would say, you know, for, for most, of, you know, first of all, the whole, I think everybody's got the right idea and the, the value of including everybody. But the the society may not have the tools and the channels and or doing it right at, at the moment to make sure that you know inclusion is a mainstream, right? There is idea of inclusion, there is actual inclusion. <clears throat> So I think from a societal perspective, you know, including uh, everybody, it, it, it needs to start from the right age, right, right at the beginning from education, it's from from even when a baby was born and, and the toy designed and the, 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 the sort of, you know, how currently STEM, STEM toy seems to be more attracted to boys and 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 dolls and playhouse and more attracted to girls, for example, there's a bit of a divide right from the early stage. 
and it's a similar thing as people with disabilities make sure that you know the, the cartoons and the movies that that it includes everybody represent, representation matters right so i think from a societal perspective every single little bit of our life from the beginning being a baby born and growing up in school education to um you know graduating to universities and have jobs or your business etc and the whole sort of life cycle and then you have you know you know your daily services like you know living the basic human basic needs living the living situation the the, the eating the, the the clothing the entertainment all of this kind of every single aspects of life need to be thinking how can we make it more inclusive right at the beginning right so i think that is a key thing from uh, for, for the society to really thrive and to be truly inclusive mm -hmm. and secondly you know from a sort of more um micro level or an individual organization level is where i mentioned before in terms of you know making sure the recruitment your hr policy is inclusive and you know this is this is all this is required by laws and regulation there's no discriminations right in, that, in an umbrella umbrella level but in terms of actually execution and i think that bits just require a lot more training within organizations to understand what that means you know it's easy to say diversity and inclusion it's easy talk than doing it if you like is it tick box exercise or is it a true culture of course is it a true culture within the organization mm -hmm. in terms of everything you do and i think that is the key that's a sort of micro level of change and then you see this micro level of change of culture being inclusive and it's happening it's right happening in in you know in, in school because my children grow up they would understand this is just a norm everybody's different everybody's unique there's no gender there's no you know disabilities there's no race right and and it that's should be anyway there should be no discrimination of any sort exactly exactly but but the but the culture side of things is still in existence. You hear yeah. horror stories, you hear you know high profile stories out there, but 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 the, the culture is going to take some time. You know, I can foresee that my children generation is going to grow up with that as a fundamental human rights, as a fundamental level of um, way of living. Right. So that is that is that, and then. Um, you know, and then I, I would say from a sort of even more micro level into the organization level perspective in terms of products and service offerings is make sure that the, your product and service design right from the beginning is inclusive, right? What's inclusive? You know, as I mentioned, inclu in, in, inclusive design actually benefits all. So make sure your products and service design from the beginning includes audience, um, not the main target audience you're offering, but also think what could have been better. Like if you walk, if you include people with disabilities or or other uh, potential secondary market segments that your product offerings is servicing, you can see the benefits of your main audience that you're targeting. Great. Right. So so that is that is the sort of more even micro level, and then and then all the way to you know how do you disseminate, how do you provide your products and your services from public sector perspective? How do you make sure that your delivery is on point, is inclusive? And that's another level of. Um, you know, the life cycles of product and service design to all the way to sales and after after aftermarkets, customer service and that kind of things as well. Yeah, well, thank you. I would love to talk with you all forever, but I also know that our time is very tight. But, you know, I'm so appreciative of, of what, you know, this conversation we've had. This is me, as I said, I'm Margaret Ajibola, the STEM Positive Disruptor. And just hearing you and how you use technology for good and this is a prime example of what is possible and also but you use it not just for you've targeted a group which is quite important because sometimes we try to include everyone in something but sometimes you've got to give a certain um uh, but a bit more a bit more love if that makes sense a way of, of bringing in so you are addressing the true needs of what is required in order to include them so that the world can be more inclusive because you can't assume that one, one um, size fits all, it never does. So it's about changing and adapting and making things happening. So again, I am so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, look, get better from your COVID <laughs> quickly and we get to speak to you soon, okay? And I'll get Thanks. some information out to you. Okay, take Thanks it so easy. Much. Okay, bye-bye.